Hey there, Trevor here. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through nine hidden ways that you can use your iPhone that I bet you didn't know about previously. Whether you're new to the iPhone or you've had it for years, I bet you didn't know these tricks. Let's jump in. The first thing that I'm gonna show you is the Measure app. We can access the Measure app just by swiping down and typing in Measure and it should pop up. Or you can just swipe all the way to the left until you get to the app library. And again, we can just search for measure. Now, the measure app does two different things. One, of course, it just measures. It measures distance from one point to another point. But it also has a level built in, which is a really cool feature as well. So let's first go over to level. Tap on that and you'll be able to see, all right, it's perfectly level. But if I start to tilt my iPhone you can see it gets off level and I can tilt it the other way. Especially this is important or useful for hanging pictures or making sure everything is plumb and lined up. Keep in mind, this might not be as perfect as using an actual bubble level, but it does a pretty good job. Now, the other thing that you can do as well is measure. And essentially it will open up the camera and you can measure the point between two different points. So let's say I have this gem here and I wanted to measure the distance between these two different points. I can tap on the plus and then swipe my finger over a little bit and then tap on the plus again. And you'll be able to see it measures that distance. Now I have a couple different options. After I've done that, after I've measured that distance and press the plus and then the plus again, I can tap on the little uh, white button at the very bottom right, and that will take a screenshot. But I can also tap on the trash can icon at the very top right if I wanted to delete that out, or I could hit the back button if I no longer wanted that. Now, that's the first thing I wanted to show you. But the next thing I wanted to show you is how to scan documents directly on your iPhone. So if you got a document and you wanted a PDF version of it, you don't need a printer or a fancy scanner. You can do it on your phone. Now, all you need to do is open up the notes app here. So it's right here. I can find it here. Or again, you can just swipe down and type in notes if you wanted to open that up that way. Now let's tap at the very bottom right to create a new note. And on here, you'll see a paperclip icon. I can tap on that paperclip icon and I have the ability to either scan text or scan documents. Let's say I wanna scan a document and essentially I'm gonna lift my phone up here and I have my little binder here or my journal. I can just hold it in front of that text and you'll be able to see just like that, it scans it. I can tap at the bottom left and there it is. Again, you can use this for documents, for pages. It will automatically recognize and crop to just that document so that you won't see anything else. And essentially it will wrap these all into a PDF. So if you're good with this, all you need to do is hit the back button and the check mark. And now you can see scanned document. Now this will save it as a PDF or you could hit the share button at the very top and you could email it to someone or to yourself. You could airdrop, send it through messages or just save it to the files app on your phone if you wanted to do that as well. The next cool trick that I want to show you is called back tap. It essentially allows you to tap the back of the iPhone and that will do a number of different things that you can set it to do. To do that, we need to get into your settings. So hop into the settings app on your phone and we're going to choose the accessibility option. And then you'll be able to see as you scroll down the touch option, tap on that. Now at the very bottom is back tap and it's currently set to off, but I'm gonna choose double tap. This means when you tap the back of your iPhone twice, there's also a triple tap. If you wanna tap it three times, it'll do something different. Now let's tap on double tap and a cool option is camera or what I usually use is screenshot, but you can have it go to the home if you just wanted to quickly be able to go home or flashlight or volume up or Siri but let's say screenshot in this case. Now, all I have to do is tap on the back of my iPhone twice here. I have a little magnetic thing, so it might not work. 
There we go. Just tap on the back of your iPhone twice. And just like that, it took a screenshot. Now keep in mind, if you keep your iPhone in a purse or in a bag or something like that, it could accidentally be tapped twice. So make sure you're okay with that, or at least it just doesn't turn something on that you wouldn't want to be on in your purse, like recording something or something like that. So a screenshot is pretty harmless if it takes it in your purse or your bag or something like that. But keep in mind, depending on if it's in a phone, your phone's in a case, or if it's in a purse or something, it might accidentally do that as well. Now, the next thing that I will walk you through is how to read small text on your iPhone. Now, keep in mind, labels on things are printed super small, or if you're trying to read something, maybe a clothing label or an appliance label or something like that, there's a trick to be able to read it, but also just copy that text easily without needing to actually look at it. Now, what you're going to do is take a photo of that. So I took a photo, for example, I had to replace this little light in my refrigerator. It was a little LED strip light and it was way up there and it was pointed down and I could barely even see it. So I just stuck my phone in there and took a picture of it. And now you probably know this. You can just pinch in and it will zoom in and show you the exact model number so that you can replace that and buy it. But another cool feature is that you don't need to go to another app or somewhere else to type that in or to save that. All you need to do is press and hold on your finger here and it will automatically recognize the text in that photo. And then you can just hit copy. And then from here, you can open up a web browser and you can paste that in. You can search for that specific part or whatever you need. So if there's really small text, all you need to do is take a photo of it, zoom in, and then uh, tap and hold on it and it will copy that text for you without ever needing to actually read it in real life. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is the flashlight. Now, you probably realize that the iPhone has a flashlight. You usually just swipe down from the top right and there you can see is the flashlight. Now, a cool new feature on the flashlight is that you can control how the flashlight looks, how dim it is or bright it is, and whether it's really narrow or really broad. So you can see after you've tapped on it at the very top is the flashlight, I can tap here. And now I can take my finger and swipe down and it will dim the flashlight all the way to zero and then all the way to max. That's a cool feature that they did have before but works a bit more seamless now. However, a brand new feature is that you can make the basically beam of light on your iPhone flash to be really broad or really narrow, depending on what your preference is. So you can take your finger instead of going up and down, we're going to go left and right. And you can see as I do that, as I go towards the center here, it has a beam of light that is really narrow and it will change the flashlight on your phone to be really narrow and pointed or you can make it more broad, just like that if you wanted to illuminate an entire room or an area, instead of just focusing in on a specific spot. A really cool feature that's built into your flashlight. The next thing that we will do is keyboard shortcuts. Let me just turn this flashlight off. Now, what you might find is that you typically type something, but it auto corrects to something different, or it's something that you regularly type and you just want it to be able to type it easier. You can set up keyboard shortcuts on your iPhone to do that. So let's go into the settings app of your phone and let's go back to the very beginning of your settings. So go to the beginning of the settings and from here, we're going to go to your keyboard just by tapping on general option here. And then we're going to scroll down until we find keyboard on this list. Now, what you are going to use is text replacement. You'll be able to see I have a number of different things on here to replace it. And we're going to tap on the plus at the top, right? And now the phrase is what you want to basically it to write out. So let's say I want it to write out my phone number. So I'm going to say this is my phone number. And in here, the shortcut, instead of typing out my entire phone number, I just want to say T cell. So the shortcut is T cell. If I type in T cell somewhere, it will automatically replace it with this phrase, AKA my phone number. Now you can see I can hit save here 
And then all you need to do is open up again. Let's go into a note here and create a new note. And if I type in T cell, you'll be able to see it automatically types on that. I can tap on it to ignore it if I don't want to do that. But if I do want it to do it, all I need to do is hit the space bar and it will automatically enter in my phone number. You can use this for a number of different things. It's kind of a shorthand or a quick text replacement from something that's short to something that's a bit longer that you might need to type out or just a replacement if it keeps messing up your last name or something and keep trying to autocorrect it. You can just enter that in there so it doesn't ever try to autocorrect your name or place or something like that. Now, the next cool thing that I want to show you is that you can silence unknown callers on your phone. So let's open up the settings and go back to the very beginning. You might get tons of spam calls throughout the day and you can silence those unknown callers. They'll still call your phone and they can still leave a voicemail that you can listen to and choose to respond to them, but you won't be bothered by all of them. Now, to be able to do this, all we need to do is scroll to the bottom and tap on apps. And then again, scroll to the bottom until we get to the phone section. Now within the phone section, a cool new feature is you can see silence unknown callers. So if I turn this on, essentially what this says is missed calls and voicemail from unknown numbers will be moved to the unknown callers list. And then screen unknown callers, you can choose never, which means you'll get all of those to be ringed to your phone. You'll be bothered by all the spam or unknown calls. Or you can choose to either ask reason for calling. This means when they call and they're not in your contacts list, it will ask them, hey, why are you calling this person? And if it's just, just spam or an AI or a robocall, it won't know what to respond with or it won't respond and then you won't be bothered. But if it's a real person saying like, hey, this is Jake, your plumber, just calling to say I'll be there in 20 minutes, they'll be able to see that they're saying that and be able to pick up that call. So it's a really cool feature. I personally like this, but you can also switch it to silence if you didn't want to get any of those calls, no matter what, they'll just go straight to your voicemail and you can listen to them through voicemail if you wanted to. Now, I'm going to keep it on this because that's what I prefer. The next thing that I want to show you is how to share your location. Now, keep in mind if you're meeting up with somebody and you're saying like, hey, I'm at this parking lot or at this intersection or at this coffee shop. Can you meet me? And they're not necessarily sure where it is. You can just drop a pin and share your current location with them so they can just open it up in Google Maps and navigate directly to you. To be able to do that, let's just open up the messages app here. And I'm just gonna open up this message with myself. Now, all you need to do is tap on that little plus to the left here. After you've tapped on that, you can see here is location. So just tap on location. It will automatically pull your exact location and you can just hit that share button and that will share your location with anyone else so that they'll be able to navigate to you. When you do tap on share, you can choose indefinitely to permanently share your location until the end of the day or just for an hour if you're just trying to meet up with a friend somewhere. Now, the next thing that I wanna show you is the control center. This is a quick and easy way to access tons of things on your iPhone that is really powerful. So you're gonna take your finger from the top right and swipe down. You can see here's a control center. There are a bunch of useful buttons on here and options, and you can change what's on here by tapping on the plus at the top left and then hitting add control. You'll be able to see lots of things on here like an alarm or timer or the text size for various apps or websites. You can scan QR codes. You can scroll down and a lot of apps have various things in here as well, like ChatGPT has open ChatGPT, alarm clock, timer, airplane mode, brightness. And again, you can keep scrolling through. Depending on what apps are on your phone, various apps will have basically shortcuts that are built into the control center. So on all of these, you can add them directly to there just by tapping on it. Again, if you wanted silent mode or any of those, you just tap on it and it adds that button there. Now, all you have to do after that 
is just tap on it. It turns on the silent mode. Or again, you can turn the brightness way up or way down. You can turn the volume way up, way down. This is a quick and easy way to access all of those things that you commonly use on your iPhone and be able to manage them directly in the control center. Hope this helps. I'll catch you on the next one.